So you are here for learning about Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, then you are at the right place as this is the ultimate introduction into Defender for Endpoint. So to get started with Defender for Endpoint, you need to be in the security.microsoft.com portal. This is where Microsoft 365 Defender is housed. However, when we talk about Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, we talk about protecting our endpoints specifically. Now, typically when we talk about endpoints, we think about devices that either fit into your pocket or devices that fit into your backpack. However, with Defender for Endpoint, you can do way more. You can threat management for servers. You can do this for mobile devices, laptops, computers, devices that are hosted in the cloud like Windows 365 or Azure Virtual Desktop, Linux machines, Mac OS machines, all kinds of devices that work with Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. To get started with Defender for Endpoint, in the security.microsoft.com environment, you'll see the Endpoint view on the left-hand side. Now, this only becomes available if you have the licenses for this. I have a Microsoft 365 E5 license enabled, and therefore, I have access to Defender for Endpoint. However, you don't really need that specific license suite. Defender for Endpoint is also sold separately as a standalone product, for example, for threat managing your Windows servers or Linux machines. Now, from this area, you can go and inspect your device inventory because this will show all devices protected with Defender for Endpoint. In order to get your devices protected with Defender for Endpoint, you will need to go to a different section of this window. If you scroll down a little bit here on the left, you can go into settings. And in settings, you will find endpoints. This is where the management for Defender for Endpoint itself is being held. And there is all kinds of settings here, which we'll discuss in another video. However, onboarding devices into Defender for Endpoint in order to get them managed is done in the onboarding view. This is where you can choose your operating system you want to enable for Defender for Endpoint. And then, depending on your solution, you will see the instructions necessary. For example, if you want to be managing your Windows 10 and 11 devices, we have different options like running local scripts, using on-premises Active Directory domain services and group policies, using Microsoft Endpoint Config Manager or the older version of Config Manager, System Center Config Manager. You could, you could be using mobile device management. Microsoft Intune is one of those. Or you can use VDI onboarding scripts. However, if you want to start managing your Linux machines, you have script options or a preferred Linux management tool. Or if it's about macOS devices, there is already different solutions like scripts or even Intune that can push the Defender for Endpoint environment towards your client. Now, if you want to verify if Defender for Endpoint is running, one of the ways is to go into this view here and then check out the device inventory because this is a list of machines that are being managed with Defender for Endpoint. On the client side, however, for example, if we select a Windows 11 machine to play with, we could open up the Windows terminal and from within the Windows terminal, we could run a PowerShell command that would be something like this, where, where we do not want to search for a name, but we want to search for the name of sense here. So looking at this line here, it says get service, and then we will be looking for a service which contains the name sense in it. If you run this query, you could see that the status here is running, the name of the service is sense, and the display name is Windows Defender Advanced Threat Brr for protection. This is the old name for what is now called Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, but the service is still there and it will still do its trick. So looking at the machine here, once the machine is managed or threat managed with Defender for Endpoint, what you could do is open it up and go and dive a little bit deeper into this mechanism, into this system. You'll get some information about the device itself. And here we also find two very important levels, the risk level and the exposure level. 
The risk level increases or decreases in how happy you would be with it based on stuff that happens on the device. And this means that, for example, if viruses are being found or if special events happen, your risk level may increase from informational to low, medium or high. And the same thing could happen with the exposure level. The exposure level shows us the level of how well or not well a device is protected and potentially is going to be successfully attacked. Here in my case, you can see that my computer has 56 active security recommendations and this may some, be something I want to investigate. We can see the user signed in in a tour device and you can also choose to go through these extra informational sections about the device in Defender for Endpoint. One of the nicer and interesting ones is the software inventory where it shows, for example, what software has been installed on the device. Even it shows third party software. But what it also shows is how many weaknesses this version of the software has. And in my example here, Office, which apparently needs an update, has three weaknesses. We can open up the Office environment and it will show, for example, on how many devices this has been installed. And it shows the impact if we would allow the recommendations to work because that would actually lower our risk with 14.07 points. This is one of the pieces of information. Based on the weaknesses, we may find some vulnerabilities. And as you can see here, we have a couple of vulnerabilities based on Office with a CV CVSS score. And always remember, the higher the score, the worse the problem is and the faster you want to solve this. So you could open up a CVSS score and it will show an example on what it contains, what it means, and maybe you could go and also find the related security recommendation, which I'll show in a bit. It will, may also show missing KBs, but based on your software inventory and the discovered vulnerabilities, you might want to go into the security recommendations. And of course, one of those is update Microsoft Office, because that in my case would solve three weaknesses. There's also all kinds of other recommendations of Windows-based security settings I could take. Now, many of these security solutions we can implement, for example, by making use of Microsoft Endpoint Manager Intune or Config Manager, or using group policies or registry keys to change. All kinds of recommendations are here. And once you solve all of these, your computer will be more secure. In fact, what we are practicing here is attack surface reduction. Now, one of the interesting components of what we can investigate on a client is the timeline. In the timeline, we get to see all kinds of things that happened on the device. And this goes very, very deep. We can do searches here. Maybe this can help us identify if the machine has been connecting to a certain resource on the internet over the last period of time. Now this loading takes a little while, but I'm going to be fast forwarding into this. And I want to search if this computer has been, for example, connecting to something called LinkedIn. So we fast forward a little bit, everything is loaded. And here we see all kinds of nice values where the word LinkedIn is actually part of. Here we can see that in fact, this computer has been connecting to LinkedIn. One other nice way to check this out is the integration between this data and another Microsoft product that you might find interesting. If you would go to portal.cloudappsecurity, you'll notice that this same data is also be used by Cloud App Security, which by the way, recently has been renamed to Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps. Here we see that the new name already has been pushed into the portal here. Now, this solution, Defender for Cloud Apps, helps you identify software used by your users that you are not aware about first. With discovered applications, we could, for example, search for that same application of Netflix, or in this example, I was looking for LinkedIn. If I search for this, I can see that LinkedIn 
in fact, has been used within the organization by two different users on three different devices. What we could do now is go into that application and we'll see which users have been using cloud applications here. Now, one of the interesting things between Defender for Cloud Apps and Defender for Endpoint is that we can take security to a whole new level. One of the things I've been doing is I've been making sure that a certain application called manage.com is no longer allowed to be used. It's not one of the applications that is in fact being used in my organization nowadays, but one of the things I did is I taken this application from the cloud app catalog. So I went into manage.com here and I unsanctioned this application, which means that I don't want to allow my end users to use this application in the future. Now, one of the things we could check is for example, open up a browser and try to go and browse to manage.com. And here we see the result of a user trying to connect to manage.com. What, what, what is happening here is that in Defender for Cloud Apps, we disallowed manage.com for our users. And on those machines where the Defender for Endpoint sensor is installed, I am blocking that application. How to set this specific part up is integrating these two products. How it's done? I'll show you in another video. Now I want to go back into Defender for Endpoint and here we see the list of applications connecting to LinkedIn. This is just an example, but if I would get rid of the actual search here, the amount of data that is shown based on this device is at an insane deep level. There's also other things we could do. Based on what's happening on the machine, there is alerts. And we could see that, for example, I have created a gimmick alert where people searching with Google are being alerted about. And I've put this in the category of suspicious activity. Now also there's the overview again. And if for some reason we think that this device is at severe risk, we could go and isolate the device from the network. So it's not able to infect other machines. It would still be allowed to communicate with the communication applications like Outlook or Teams. It will always remain connected to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint as this is what we use to troubleshoot and protect the machine. We can also restrict application ex execution where we will no longer allow applications not signed by Microsoft from running. And we can also remotely start virus scans if you wish and even initiate live response sessions using a command line interface that allows us to communicate with that device. Now for this example, it's not going to connect because the machine is switched off, but still it is something that you might want to be doing here. Next to the live response, depending on your level of support with Microsoft, you can even consult an actual security expert working at Microsoft that may help you out with this. Now, this is of course the look of an individual machine, but you may also want to go and use different dashboards to get global information on what is happening with Defender for Endpoint in your organization. Here we see, for example, the average score for devices based on different categories like applications, network and security controls. And we can see our organization's exposure score. And of course, the lower the score, the better you are. Here we see the top vulnerable software in the organization and you can see the number of exposed devices with this. You can see the top exposed devices and the exposure disturbance that, you, that you may have. A global overview on all of your recommendations are here and some remediation options. For example, one of the devices needs to update Node.js. Here we see the overall overview of our security or software inventory and the weaknesses we have in our organization. In the event timeline, we see extra information on what is happening. For example, we have devices here where we have vulnerabilities for Adobe InDesign, Illustrator, 
My iPhone OS has several vulnerabilities, which means that I might want to do an update on my iPhone OS. InDesign has some options. Oracle GRE has some things that we need to take care of. Office, Windows 10 and Windows Service are also mentioned. And this shows us all nice information that we could take and get our environment more and more secure. And this is a very brief overview on what Microsoft Defender for Endpoint can do for you. If you want to learn more, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and if you like the video, please press the like button. It would help me and the channel out. And then you will be notified whenever there's new videos on not only Defender for Endpoint, I will also be covering Microsoft Intune, Azure Active Directory, well, basically anything you might find in either Azure or Microsoft 365. Thank you very much for, my, for watching. I'm Alex De Jong and hope to see you again in the next video.